What's up, YouTube? This is uh, Too Raw for TV. And uh, I got the uh, inspiration to make this video from a comment from yesterday's video I did about Kawhi Leonard. Uh, before I go into this, just a reminder, if you like the content, just hit the like button. Uh, if you're not subscribed to Too Raw for TV, please subscribe. And uh, uh, hit, make sure you have hit the bell on the screen for notifications. Uh, so you get notified whenever a video of mine drops because YouTube, you know, likes to suppress smaller channels. So, but anyway, point being, uh, someone just said something yesterday, man. And it's no, I think it's hot boy. I think it's, I think it's the subscriber's name and he, he's okay. You know what I'm saying? But hot boy, just something that you said, just really, really just rubbed me the wrong way, man. Like, like I said, it's not nothing against you, but. When you said that, basically because Kawhi Leonard won a championship, he can do what he want to. You know, he can miss games. And, you know, as long as you win championships, you can do whatever you want to do. See, that that just rubbed me the wrong way when you said that, man, because I understand where you're coming from. Like, when you're a, a, a star player on a winning team, um, you get afforded certain – leniencies that other players uh, may not get. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the coach might not approach you the same way they approach a role player. You get paid more. You know what I'm saying? So there are, uh, you get more publicity, more praise, more adulation, but at the same time, when your team lose, you need to get the same blame. That's the one thing that used to irritate me about some uh, uh, analysts when it comes to LeBron James. You got to take the good with the bad. Uh, but having said that, those leniencies only go but so far. You're expected to go out there and play, okay? Um, no matter if you've won championships or not, um, if you're healthy, you're expected to play. Now, I understand it's just the preseason, okay? I understand that. So, these games may not matter quite as much, but it's important to your teammates to show that you're willing to work as hard as the 15th man on the rotation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Ticket TV just did an interview just uh, with a guy who was a former Laker, and he said that, uh, shout out to Ticket TV, uh, he said that uh, if there was a guy who didn't want to play in the preseason, <laughs> Kobe would probably try to have that guy cut. Because if I'm the star player and I'm setting the tone, I'm working my ass off, as the Kobe Bryant did, and and you don't want to work as hard, get the fuck off my team. The superstar sets the tone, man. So, I get it. Kawhi Leonard historically has not been a Cal Ripken. He ain't Randy Smith. He's not uh, A.C. Green. He's not Dolph Shays. He's not Elvin Hayes. You know, he, he's not one of these guys that's going to play Every game. He's not an Iron Man. Um, I saw that so far in Kawhi Leonard's career, he's missed 29% of his games of, of possible contests. I'll put it like that. He's missed almost 200 possible contests already in his career. So I get it. Uh, he's not a guy that's going to play 82 games. But if you're healthy, I expect you to play at least 70 contests. And that's being minimal, okay? At least 70 to 72, 73 games. If you want to take a couple of games off every now and then, um, you know, I, that still rubs me the wrong way if you're healthy. But I understand we're in a different era. Okay, but this, this 20 game shit? No. Mm, no. And I, and I heard Doc Rivers said they're not going to pursue aggressive low management with Kawhi Leonard. And, uh, you know, I, I support that 100% because. To me, honestly, when people talk like that, that someone's entitled to miss games, that smacks of elitism to me. You know, and that doesn't belong in sports. You know, it's almost like saying uh, someone who, you're basically arguing for the inequity of the economic system in some ways, man. Like, the have-nots got to work harder 
much harder just to have the little shit they got while the haves, mm, they can live, you know, very comfortable, don't have to work as hard, don't have to do anything. I mean, that just, that's just how it came across to me, you know, like, I know, you know, like I said, it just, that, that just, that just don't even sound right to me. Like, most players, no matter what sport you're talking about, whether it's the NFL, you're talking about the NBA, whether you're, whatever, to be a champion, you have to really work harder than everybody else. In a team-oriented game, it takes everybody. In singular sports like tennis, boxing, these guys have to work really, these guys work are on another level. All of the greats, the all-time greats, of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, uh, you know, in basketball, uh, Akri Abdul-Jabbar, not enough is said about his work ethic. Um, you know, a Bill Russell uh, going to other sports, a Jerry Rice, a Terrell Owens. These guys, they, they weren't great just because of athletic ability. Their work ethic was legendary. Herschel Walker, Herschel Walker, who had a uh, awesome workout regimen, said that <laughs> he thought his workout regimen was crazy. He said he worked out with Jerry Rice and was like, what the fuck? This motherfucker is running through mountains. What the fuck? <laughs> Walter Payton, Larry Bird, the list goes on and on and on. Larry Bird was not the most physically gifted basketball player, but he was the best in the world for a number of years as a basketball player because of his workout ethic, ethic excuse me, as well as his desire to be great and uh, his skill level. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, when it comes to Kawhi Leonard, I'm sorry, man, but nah. Um, unless he's actually injured, which I hope that's not the case, this guy needs to be out there and play. You know what I'm saying? No, no. Mm -mm. I just grew up watching all of the great players work hard. Like, the thing that's crazy is Charles Barkley, who by today's standards would be a hard worker, was considered somewhat lazy by other NBA players because they thought that he spent too much time partying and sometimes overindulging himself when it came to liquor, food, what have you. Um, see, Dennis Rodman was a different animal. Dennis Rodman was a freak of nature. Even Jordan, like, didn't understand how he was able to. I think Michael Jordan said in that 30 for 30 documentary, he didn't understand. He, he fully expected Dennis Rodman not to live to be 40 years old. Um, he didn't understand how Dennis could do the things he was doing. Like, Dennis would play an entire game then go after the game and work out like a madman and then go later on that night and party. You know what I'm saying? Party all night. Maybe sleep for a, a couple of hours. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, the next day or the day after that, you're playing another NBA game. Like, he didn't understand how Dennis Robbins was able to do that. Um, like I said, but, yeah, it's just a totally different era now, man. Like, these guys now... Like, they expect not to be able to have to put all the work in there. You know, like, you got guys now. I mean, the thing about it, these players nowadays, they get paid more than ever before. These guys are making far more money than uh, the players made just 20 years ago, just 10 years ago. All right? They don't have to deal with the same uh, defenses that the uh, prior generations had to deal with. They don't have to deal with... Uh, you know, the expectations that fans had before. A lot of There's a lot of sports fans out there now who have gotten used to being fans of poor franchises and have been terrible franchises for a while. I mean, the Chicago Bulls won six championships in the 1990s, but you know what? We've been, except for the Derrick Rose little period of time, we've been a pretty bad franchise for almost 20 years now. 
The Knicks have been a horrible franchise since about 2003. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of historically good and great teams that have had to deal with losing. So it is what it is, man. When it comes to, I understand that maybe Kawhi Leonard, some people may argue, well, he plays for the playoffs, but you got to go through the regular season to make up for the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? To to, to get to the playoffs. So, no, you got to put in the same work that everybody else has. You know what I'm saying? You can't sit there and be the superstar and get on Patrick Beverly for missing the game due to having a head cold or whatever it is. But you've missed three straight games due to some fucking strategy. I, I can't take you seriously as a leader at that point. But if I see the leader out there busting his ass, I feel a certain type of way. I feel embarrassed complaining about can I miss a game because of a head cold. I feel like, man, I'm, I'm letting my team down. But this, if the leader of the team, you know, Kawhi Leonard, is playing through aches and pains, you know what I'm saying, then I, I feel obligated to do the same. That's what I mean by when a leader sets the tone. This isn't an individual sport. This is a team-oriented sport. And Kawhi Leonard did strongly contribute to those that Raptor championship. And without Kawhi, they wouldn't have won a championship. But it wasn't just Kawhi, okay? I, you know, I, I remember other individuals who were pivotal in a championship. It wasn't just Kawhi Leonard, okay? It was Fred Van Vliet. I remember him. Out there, Pascal Siakam was out there, wasn't he? Wasn't Serge Ibaka huge in pivotal moments in, the, in those games, especially down the stretch on the bench? Okay. Uh, Kyle Lowry, if I haven't said him, you know, he had a big final series. And um, the list goes on and on. The other guy, too, uh, he was big for them, especially in the Bucks series. I can't think of his name right now. Um, but, yeah, the, the list goes on and on as far as contributors to the championships, to the championship. So it's not just Kawhi Leonard. And this is a whole different team. And, you know what I'm saying, he has to prove himself again. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my take on that, man. You know what I'm saying? If the guy's legitimately hurt, okay, I understand the low strategy. Um, But unlike last year with LeBron James, like his situation, the low strategy was getting on my nerves. But... At least for him, number one, LeBron James has already proved proven his greatness time and time again. Number two, LeBron James is 34 years old, with, with, with at the time 16 years under his belt. Now it's 17 season. And number three, the Lakers weren't playing for anything. Their, their season at the end was essentially over. So why risk getting hurt? Because I understand the business aspect of it, too. These guys are financial investment so i understand that part of it as well but you can't let the business get in the way of the game all the time either these guys get paid to play get out there and perform you know what i'm saying so with that said man that's it you know tell me what you guys think and you know if you appreciate the content on this channel if you want to if you can you know what i'm saying uh you can donate to this channel if you choose to be able to paypal the cash out uh and if you want to uh sign up to the patreon i appreciate all you guys that have signed up to the patreon and all you have donated as well if you sign up to the patreon maybe we'll talk about stuff on there that i can't talk about on youtube uh due to censorship reasons and i will have a lot a lot more of my rants on the patreon over there because i can talk the way i want to talk and, and stuff uh so with that said that's it